Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. So the answers to these six questions are these days considered basics in information gathering. It's even referred to as the Kipling method, the Kipling method which is used in journalism, research and even police investigation. And each question, each of these six questions has an answer, a factual answer, that is it cannot simply be answered with a yes or a no. And in this sense, this poem serves me and helps me to provide you with some background information about Science 2.0 and also the Research Alliance which is organizing together with other partners this conference. Though the first honest man is what? So what is Science 2.0 all about? In our notion, Science 2.0 is on the investigation of how social media impacts on scientific research and publication processes. It is as simple as that. How does social media impact on research and publication processes? The name of the second honest man was why. So why does Science 2.0 happen? What's important is that we did not invent Science 2.0. We were not the ones who invented this as a new research topic. Science 2.0 is happening. It is taking place. The research community is more and more using social media tools because these tools like Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Etherpad, Google Docs, you know, they all allow easy participation, easy collaboration, easy sharing of content and of course open discourse. And slowly, you know, over time the researchers have taken these tools within their scholarly communication processes. Even though, and that is important, these tools have not been designed for the purpose of supporting research. For example, Facebook was never designed for supporting scholarly communication. Same is true for Twitter. Same is true for all the other tools. But now the scholars are taking these tools and include them in their research and publication processes. And this observation led to the foundation of the Leibniz Research Alliance Science 2.0. And when did it start? When is the name of the third honest man? And the Leibniz Research Organization had a call for proposals to initiate what we call research alliances. That is, these um, uh, research alliances should address societal challenges, not vertical challenges in one field, but societal general challenges. And they should bring together you know, uh, researchers from various disciplines to address this challenge. So we submitted a proposal, the proposal got accepted, and in December 2012, we started operation. Since then, the alliance grew up to currently around about 35 members. And these members do come from all the different research disciplines. It's not only natural science, it's not only computer science, it's also social sciences, humanities, cultural sciences, economics, all the different sciences are represented in this um, alliance. And also, what is important, half of the members are information infrastructure providers, such as libraries. And for the first time, we have an alliance in which the information infrastructure providers are working together with their communities, the researchers, in a, the same alliance, in the same network, in the same projects. The name of the fourth honest man is how. So how do we address Science 2.0 within this network? And in the um, beginning, we had many workshops and um, you know, discussion rounds, round tables to identify what are the three key challenges we want to address. And the three challenges are new working habits, technology, and user behavior. New working habits is related to the question how does the use of, say, Google+, of Twitter, of Dropbox, of Etherpad, how does that impact on the working habits of the scientific scholars? Does it change somehow the way research is conducted, yes or no? Second challenge is technology. As mentioned earlier, all the technologies we are currently using 
originally have not been designed for the purpose of supporting scientific processes, but now they are part of our scientific information infrastructure. So we, we, we think about which other technologies are needed, we do a technology development, and um, then once the technologies have been developed, we go to the third challenge, which is user behavior. Then we want to investigate how are the scientists using these technologies and also the other technologies which already exist in the world of social media tools. And the name of the fifth honest man is where? So the question here is where does Science 2.0 play a role? Of course, in all the disciplines, I would like to focus on the um, uh, funding agencies and allow me to look a little bit into the German um, uh, funding world. And at this stage, Science 2.0 is not explicitly mentioned in one of the funding programs we do have in Germany. Of course, there are connections to existing programs, like for example, if I take the Federal Ministry for Education and Research, there is a group working on a citizen science strategy for Germany. And citizen science, of course, is very much related to Science 2.0. Because with these tools, you know, we can open up discourses and dialogues and we can easily include citizen scientists into scientific processes. Citizen science are those non-scientists who are part of a scientific process. At the German funding agency, the German research agency, DFG, we have several programs. One is uh, dealing with electronic publishing. Of course, this is related to Science 2.0. Still, Science 2.0 is not explicitly mentioned. And ele electronic publishing, in their notion, is very much about open access. Open access of publications, green road, gold road, open data. But electronic publishing, like in uh, Science 2.0, is more than that. For example, how should we deal with scientific wikis and blogs? More and more scientific information appears in wikis and blogs, but traditional quality measurement mechanisms do not work anymore. Peer review does not exist for a scientific blog, wiki, for a scientific blog. Everybody can claim to be the best expert of the world and um, visit his or her blog, and then you get the information from the best expert, but no quality mechanism no quality assurance mechanism is available. That could be another important topic to be addressed within the germ funding system. And then at the European level, of course, we do have Horizon 2020. And in the first talk, um, we will get an insight into the digital agenda. And of course, Science 2.0 is part of that. But there are other um, DGs, uh, like for example, DG Research. They are preparing a public consultation on Science 2.0. They are currently developing an indicator system for how to monitor Science 2.0 in Europe. So how can we measure the movement of Science 2.0 in the scientific community all over Europe? That is one activity they are currently preparing. And then there is DG Connect. We also have a talk here from DG Connect. They provide the infrastructure and they are using more the term digital science, but that is very much related to um, our topic here at the conference. And the third, no, the sixth fellow is who. So who is organizing and attending this conference? This conference here is a joint effort of several partners and uh, the leading partners are the um, research alliance, the Leibniz Research Alliance Science 2.0, it's also the uh, GoPortis network, that is the network of the German uh, um, specialist libraries. This includes my library, but it also includes the um, Leibniz Information Center of Life Sciences in Cologne. It includes the German National Library of Science and Technology in Hanover. We also partner with the eScience network from Sachsen. We partner with uh, the EXS project, one of the leading uh, IEPs, integrated projects in, in Europe. We will have presentations for the eScience Network and the EXS project during the course of this conference. And of course, other partners are the Association for Media and Science, the Leibniz Association, our umbrella or association, and the Initiative Digital Society. I am very happy and actually a little bit proud that for the first time we met of this conference, we managed to attract 154 participants. 154, and we have maybe 20, 25 speakers. 
So it's not a conference of the type where you have like 150 participants and 160 speakers. It's, you know, I'm very thankful that you all made it to, to come here and it also shows me how important that topic is. And these 154 participants do come from 11 different countries. Thank you very much for being here. And I would like to close my opening um, with my own experience on conferences. And the experience is such that at the end of, let's say, at the end of an excellent conference, I always had more questions than at the beginning of that conference. I always left the conferences with more questions than at the beginning. And this brings me back to the poem of Rudyard Kipling, because that poem ends with the following lines. I know a person small, she keeps 10 million serving men who get no rest at all. From this second she opens her eyes, one million house, two million wares, and seven million wise. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference. <laughs>